Now at nine, after buying her studio as a teenager, a Southeast Kansas dance instructor nears a decade in business. Learn how the four states community celebrated the eclipse with a celebration. That story coming up. And a drive through sign is going up in Galena, Kansas to draw in Route 66 travelers. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. This afternoon's eclipse reached totality in parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, and several other states. Now, here in our viewing area, it surpassed 90%. KOAM Samantha Walker tells us what the eclipse experience was like at a solar bration party in Joplin. A solar eclipse is not something you see every day. So people across the four states were ready to go outside in hopes of catching the event. The Creative Learning Alliance in Joplin hosted a series of events leading up to the eclipse. During the solar event, the organization hosted a solarbration, an eclipse viewing party where the community could come out and experience the event together. So this is the last eclipse that's going to be visible in North America until 2044 and in Missouri until 2045. So we wanted to make sure that all of those people that couldn't travel had a place to watch the eclipse. While the four state area was not in totality, meaning the sun would be completely blocked, local eclipse fans were still excited for the rare opportunity. It looks like the um, moon is about to cover up the sun and it's kind of um, coming on it so slowly. While the daylight got noticeably darker during the eclipse, clouds in the sky blocked some views of the event. But eclipse watchers say that didn't hurt their experience. I mean, there is just enough of cloud coverage that it's not too hot out because it's 77 degrees out. It's been crazy to have that weather today, but I think it's been a great opportunity to uh, view the eclipse. But for some solar eclipse viewers, experiencing it as a community is the most important part. I think it's because it's a once in a lifetime event that we're able to come and enjoy. You can enjoy with your family and friends. And so it does make it just a time to create memories. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOM News. Now folks at the Solarbration were able to receive their own pair of eclipse glasses to safely view the event. Well, the eclipse reached totality in Mountain View, Missouri, and other places in the southern and eastern parts of the Show Me State. KOAM Shannon Becker streamed live from Mountain View, where spectators pulled off the road to watch the event. The eclipse also reached totality in parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas, including in Russellville, Arkansas, where our very own chief meteorologist Doug Hetty posted his perspective. The eclipse also reached totality in parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas, including Lake Dardendale State Park in Russellville, Arkansas. And that, again, is where Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty enjoyed the view, and you can see him there in the blue shirt in the video. Speaking of meteorologists, Lindsay Gaffney is joining us with a first look at weather. Well, unfortunately, the clouds did not hold off for the solar eclipse, but they did clear out as we moved later into the evening. Now. Clouds will roll back in ahead of the rain chances that we have coming in tonight. But outside in Joplin right now, it's 62 degrees, pretty light winds. And we do see rain chances start to pick up a little bit later after midnight tonight. Temperatures across the region starting to dip down into the 50s now. Parsons is 58, Iola 59, Pittsburgh 57. So it is getting a little bit chillier. We see a low temperature down to about 53 tonight. And here you can see the rain chances starting to push in all the way from Texas, we're having some thunderstorms. Now, most of the severity is going through Arkansas, but we are getting uh, the top of that storm, and I'll have a lot more details for you in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Historic Route 66 runs right through Galena, Kansas, and now a new sign marks that distinction. The sign will go in front of Luigi's Pit Stop on East Front Street. And the shop is themed around the movie Cars, you guessed it. And when the sign is fully painted, drivers will be able to park underneath it and take photos. Well, today's eclipse was not just a sight for humans. Joe Hickman has a look at what happened at Springfield Zoo when the animals there experienced the disruption to their normal routines. Whether it's the long tongue of a giraffe or the birth of a baby Joey kangaroo, 
The Dickerson Park Zoo offers a host of unique characters and sights on any given day, and it just so happens that today's solar eclipse also coincided with National Zoo Lovers Day. So some visitors, like the Duffy family, came all the way from Wablo, not for the eclipse, but for the giraffes. We get to feed them, and sometimes they also lick us. I know, he is stupid. You stop that right now. Getting licked by a giraffe's tongue seemed to be much higher on the popularity scale than watching the sun get covered up. But then again, zookeeper Tia Fletcher wasn't expecting a big reaction from the animals during the eclipse because... Animals tend to be a lot smarter than people, so they don't always look up in the sun like we do. Um, so probably won't really notice the eclipse. You gotta keep your eyes covered. Some families did take advantage of the free glasses to take in the eclipse as well, taking their own guesses at how the animals would react. I think maybe they'll be a little sassier. Maybe. <laughs> we were told the best animal reaction might come from a pair of apes. We're at the Siamé exhibit and we have Michaela and Sebastian. They are a mating pair, Siamé's mate for life. And they also have a really unique quality of creating a duet song together. So we are hoping that they might sing during the eclipse. This is footage from another zoo as to what that singing is supposed to sound like. <laughs> but all we got as it got darker was Michaela breaking into a shimmy dance. And like all the other reactions during the eclipse, like the bears going to sleep or the lions grooming, you can't actually determine if that was normal behavior or something caused by the change in light and temperature. It's not like something that you can observe. It's not a behavior, it's a natural phenomenon. So that doesn't happen monthly or yearly. So you have to wait to get that, uh, that research and that data. So we just don't know. A lot of the animals exhibited behaviors that we associate with anxiety. We don't know if it's the eclipse itself that makes them anxious or the crazy behavior of the people around because we are so excited. We're watching and learning just like everybody else. Interesting perspective there. Well, coming up as gardening season kicks off, we've got tips to help you save your back. Millennials and Generation Z are experiencing a new wave of anxiety when it comes to medical cost. According to a new study, 67% of Gen Z and 62% of millennials avoid seeking health care because of the price. That's compared to 46% of Americans overall. The study was commissioned by an insurance firm, Assurance IQ. A similar study done last year by the Federal Reserve found that a quarter of all Americans went without medical care in 2022 because of the price. Well, some common bandage products used every day may contain some potentially harmful chemicals. The Environmental Health Sciences Independent Lab says in a new report that some adhesive bandage products may contain a type of synthetic chemical known as PFAs. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency notes these forever chemicals may be linked with an increased risk of cancer. The report says the chemicals are in bandage products such as Band-Aid, Curade, and in-store brands from CVS, Walmart, and Target. Well, this time of year, it's a popular hobby. Gardening has so many health benefits, including exercise. And you can even eat the healthy foods you plant. But if you're not careful, this hobby can wreak havoc on your body. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on how you can save your neck and back while gardening. It's spring, and if you're looking to plan a new healthy hobby, let gardening take root in your life. It's nice to get outside, have the benefits of sunshine, have the benefits of the beauty and the, the really tasty stuff that can come from your garden. Dr. Deborah Benzel with Cleveland Clinic says gardening has numerous health benefits, but you need to prepare your body. Before you get started, stretch, then focus on not bending over too much and avoid picking things up from a bent over position. Um, there's a lot of bending and lifting and caring involved in gardening, and all of those things put a lot of stress on our neck and our back. Rotate your body regularly to avoid stiff muscles, lift heavy things with your legs, and avoid sudden twisting or reaching motions. Also, make sure you're using the proper gardening equipment. You want to use tools that fit your body and that are sharp and that are effective so that you can have the tool do the work whether, rather than your body do the work. And once you're done, it's time to stretch again. If you're feeling achy, Benzel says to try some ice or anti-inflammatory medicine. You can get up and get back in the garden the next day. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
Well, the doctor says stretches should be low and deep and to hold that position for a bit to allow the muscles and to really stretch and relax. Well, new research shows accelerated aging is linked to a higher cancer risk in younger adults. Researchers looked at the medical records of nearly 150,000 people ages 37 to 54 in a large data registry in the UK. They put blood-based markers into an algorithm to determine each person's biological age as opposed to how many years they've been alive or chronological age. Well, Lindsay is next with a complete look at your forecast. And later, Frontenac and Riverton square off on the baseball diamond in a doubleheader. We'll have highlights in sports. Overall, today has been a pretty great day. We had some clouds earlier. They cleared out. Unfortunately, they cleared out after the solar eclipse. Now, taking a look at downtown Joplin from the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex, you can see clouds are still cleared out. Winds are pretty light in the area, but we do have more clouds rolling in as we have some rain chances also making an appearance tonight after about 2 a.m. That's when we're going to start to see some of these rain showers move into our region, although the main threat's going to be south of us going through Arkansas. So we're not getting two severe storms and this trend continues for the next several days. We have a very low risk for storms the next couple of days. We will have rain chances, but it'll mostly just be some lighter showers with possible embedded thunderstorms, but nothing severe. No threats of hail, wind or tornadoes for the next couple of days. Now, this is what we're going to expect to see tonight. We'll have those clouds roll in and then right around 2 a.m. is when we're going to begin to see some of these showers push through. They're going to be making their way through Joplin region and then they'll continue to move further south. Now it'll be scattered showers, nothing too severe and we may see an embedded thunderstorm in there. But like I said, Tonight's not going to be anything to be concerned about, but we do have those rain chances continuing again tomorrow night. However, for the day, it's going to get up to about 70 degrees, be mostly cloudy during the daytime hours, and then we'll see some showers push back in around 3 p.m. in some of our southern counties and western counties. We'll see those chances push in a little bit later on in the evening and some breeze showers and like I said, maybe a thunderstorm or two. We've got one pushing through our western counties as well. Now that's about 3.30 in the morning on Wednesday. These shower chances will continue all day on Wednesday. This will be 12.30 during the day. We'll have showers across the region and then like I said, some embedded thunderstorms across the region as well. Nothing too severe. Could expect to see maybe some small hail as the worst threat for any of the rain chances we have for the next couple of weeks. But temperatures do drop after the rain on Wednesday, dropping down 61 Wednesday, 64 on Thursday, but will warm up pretty drastically by the weekend up back up to the 80s. And we do have some fire weather chances within that weekend. We'll keep you updated on that. But the next chance of thunderstorms not coming back around until Tuesday morning. We'll have some scattered thunderstorms Tuesday all day and then again on Thursday. Yeah, but it held off enough to where we could see the eclipse today and it was beautiful. Well, unfortunately, I did not get to see the eclipse because I did not have <laughs> my eclipse glasses. I saw it get a little darker, yeah. but that was, that was unfortunately about it. Yeah, well, there's always the next one. In 40 years, I'm looking <laughs> yeah. forward to it. You'll be around. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, Chris Bryant was at the Buffalo National River near Marshall, Kansas, so one of the first places in the Ozarks to witness the total eclipse. Bonnie Tyler is saying this is a different kind of eclipse, and the people gathered here today at the Buffalo National River would agree. There's really nothing you could do but sit back and enjoy the show. It's amazing. I, I can't stress that enough how awesome an event like this is in some of the most beautiful places in America, like Buffalo National River. People came from as far away as North Carolina and Orange County, California, and as close as a county or two away. Um, we're here to see the eclipse. It's a, one of the closest places for the path of totality from Fayetteville, so we drove all the way out here to see it. 
As the eclipse starts, the paper glasses were not enough. If you feel really comfortable with uh, <laughs> yeah, like holding the camera steady, you could put it right up to the eyepiece maybe. And Taking the time to spend with family was the main reason those gathered at the Buffalo National River. Pretty sweet. I saw the one in 17 and now I've got two five-year-olds and a two-year-old and I really hope the five-year-olds remember it. But uh, I'm a little afraid the two-year-old's not going to. I'd really like her to, but it's pretty cool. Then, as the sky darkened, the anticipation turned to elation. <laughs> Everything you thought it'd be? Yes. And more. And more. Like that is so incredible. We got some great news from the telescope, although I'm going to put the filter back on because I think it's about to end. Just looking around, it has gotten dark. You see everybody out here kind of taking it in, taking a look at it, enjoying the entire situation. It's one of those things where you know, you can look up at it now and see it with your bare eyes. You can start to see those planets up there around the solar eclipse. It's like on the east and the west of us. Because it's brighter over there and brighter over there and not in the middle. <laughs> As the sun starts to reappear like a Broadway curtain call, the reason for the experience doesn't matter. It was about sharing it with the ones you love. Oh, ab absolutely amazing. I mean, we're, we're outdoor people anyway, so to get out and do something like this and get to see them, it's awesome. Well, in honor of this uh, space event, I've got my tank. Coming up, another round of student loan debt relief. President Biden unveils a new plan to forgive student loan debt for millions of Americans. I'm Rebecca Castor in Washington with details on that and why critics say borrowers shouldn't get their hopes up. 45% of Americans are open to using chat GPT to review their taxes, but experts warn they should use this service with caution. 17% of Americans say they have used the artificial intelligence chat box for tax filing, and that's according to a survey from the Harris Poll. Another study from cardrates.com found 14% of Americans they surveyed have used it for taxes, and one in five Americans are open to using the service. Well, even though the Supreme Court blocked his student loan forgiveness plan last year, President Biden is still trying to find ways to provide relief for borrowers. Today, he announced his latest plan to help those who've racked up interest. This proposal, however, also faces a challenge in court. Rebecca Castor has the details. Folks, I will never stop to deliver student debt relief and hardworking Americans. It was one of President Joe Biden's top 2020 campaign promises. And once again, in 2024, he hopes reducing student loan balances will help raise his poll numbers. By freeing millions of Americans from this crushing debt of student debt, it means they can finally get on with their lives instead of being put, their lives being put on hold. Biden's latest plan to forgive student loan debt would cancel up to $20,000 for borrowers with runaway interest automatically cancel debt for those who qualify under existing programs but haven't applied and help those experiencing financial hardship. But the last time Biden tried to implement student loan forgiveness, it was shot down by the Supreme Court. And this proposal is sure to face a legal battle as well. So mm -hmm. desperate to get young people to reelect him. You know, he's really willing to undermine both Congress and the Supreme Court. The new plan, like the old one, is not just illegal, it's grossly unfair. Even with the legal fallout, Biden has still canceled more student loan debt than any other president. He's wiped out a total of $146 billion for 4 million Americans. Unless Biden can pick his numbers up dramatically, he can't win. That's what explains him doubling down on student loans. It's not about constitutionality, it's politics. The Department of Education is required to gather public comment on the proposal before it's finalized. And despite the legal challenges, White House officials say they hope borrowers start to see relief in the early fall. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. A new report from the U.S. Labor Department shows job gains in key sectors. The payroll monthly report released by the department shows that employers added 303,000 jobs in March topping the projected 200,000 gain that the, London, at, that the London Stock Exchange initially projected. Job sectors that showed the best performances included healthcare, government, and leisure and hospitality. Up next, how hundreds of couples in Arkansas took advantage of today's eclipse to tie the knot at a special time. Hundreds of couples today gave new meaning to the phrase total eclipse of the heart. 
358 couples got married in Russellville, Arkansas during the solar eclipse. The event, Elope at the Eclipse, was described by some as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The mass wedding ended just before the skies above became briefly blackened. 30 more minutes of news, weather, and sports is coming your way. Students in Commerce, Oklahoma, took part in a mock crash scene investigation with the help of local law enforcement officials. Plus, former President Donald Trump weighs in on the issue of abortion rights. You're watching the Four States Most Watched News. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. A deputy is injured in a head-on fatal collision near Elk City, Kansas. It happened early yesterday morning as a Montgomery County deputy was responding to a non-injury vehicle accident on Highway 160 just outside of Independence, Kansas. And while en route, another vehicle veered into oncoming traffic, causing a head-on collision that left the deputy seriously injured. The driver of the oncoming vehicle died on scene. The injured deputy and three other people were taken to the hospital. Students at Commerce High School had the opportunity to visit with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Commerce Fire Department, Quapaw Nation Marshal Service, and other local agencies to learn about distracted driving and driving under the influence. Students participated in a mock crash at the school's football stadium to see the effects and dangers that come with driving under the influence or distracted with some of the students playing actors. Former President Trump avoided committing to a national abortion plan if he's reelected, angering some conservatives. President Biden is using the turmoil as a strategic campaign move. Fox News correspondent Caroline Shively has more from Washington. Even though the Supreme Court tried to settle the abortion issue two years ago, the issue is front and center again in 2024. Now, former President Donald Trump said Monday he believes abortion should be an issue left to states. The states will determine by vote or legislation or whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris quickly reacted, vowing to restore the right to choose. And Joe Biden has been clear. If Congress passes a law reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade, Joe Biden will sign it into law. The Biden-Harris campaign has been trying to connect with women voters in battleground states. President Biden is visiting Wisconsin and Illinois this week, while Vice President Harris is in Pennsylvania. Women swing voters want to know that their right to abortion will be protected. Former Vice President Mike Pence calling Trump's retreat on the right to life a slap in the face to millions of Americans who voted for him. Writing on social media, too many Republican politicians are all too ready to wash their hands of the battle for life. I know pro-life Americans will never relent until we see the sanctity of life restored to the center of American law in every state in this country. Since that Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe, voters in several states have backed abortion rights measures. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Former President Trump's legal team filed a notice of appeal in his Manhattan criminal case. The trial is set to begin next week. A source says the filing relates to the gag order that has been imposed on Trump, as well as the venue for the trial. Trump's lawyers have previously contested the gag order and requested to change the location away from Manhattan. The case is related to alleged reimbursement payments Trump is accused of making to his former attorney, Michael Cohen. Well, a bit later, a Southeast Kansas dance instructor is soon to mark 10 years in business after buying her studio as a teenager. Well, clouds cleared this evening. Unfortunately, they didn't clear in time for most of us to see the solar eclipse in our region. I know I didn't get to see it. But taking a look at downtown Joplin from the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex camera, you can see still not that many clouds in the region and winds have lightened up a lot over the last few hours. Now we're tracking the next system moving in tonight, although this storm is a lot stronger south of us. We're just getting the top of it, so we're only going to see a few showers, scattered showers across the region, maybe a thunderstorm or two, but nothing too severe. And that trend's going to continue for the next couple of days, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. We do have rain chances, but as you can see, below low for the severity of these storm systems. Now, 
tonight. Well, we're going to expect to see maybe some showers pushing in around 2 a.m., especially some in our southern counties. They'll continue on. We'll see the main line moving just north of Joplin, but it'll continue to move and start to push further south. But we do have some scattered showers, maybe some scattered light thunderstorms in some of our northern counties as well. As you can see, south of Nevada, there's a few brief thunderstorms as well. Now, those diminish as we get to about 8 a.m. So tomorrow we're seeing a mostly cloudy day, but no rain during the daytime hours. Temperatures getting up to about 70 degrees, and we do have rain chances coming back around uh, Tuesday afternoon, and we'll take a look at that and see about 3 p.m. just moving around the borders of our counties, some in our southern counties and western counties. Now, these are going to continue on and push into our region around the evening hours and then moving into Wednesday morning around 3.30. We've got a pretty strong thunderstorm looking like to be on our western counties over there. And then the rest of us just getting some widespread showers, maybe some heavier rainfall areas and an embedded thunderstorm or two. But for the next several days, all, we do have a lot of rain chances. Nothing's going to be extreme or severe. Main threat would be some pretty small hail sizes and heavier rainfall in some of these stronger storms. Now, we do possibly expect some low level flooding in some low level areas, but other than that, not gonna be too bad. As we move into Thursday morning, we see winds pick up, temperatures have cooled off quite a bit, but they'll warm back up by next weekend. We're back into the 80s. We do have some fire weather concerns as we move through next weekend. And then continuing on, we've got some scattered sh thunderstorm chances on Tuesday, and those return again on Thursday. All right, well, we need the rain. So if we can just keep a little here and a little there and nothing too severe, then that's nice. Yes, I love the rain, big fan of the rain, but I am also a fan of no severe storms. Exactly. My dog's terrified of them, so hopefully she'll be good for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have severe weather today and the clouds weren't too bad. You could see the eclipse and it turned out pretty nice. I could not see the eclipse. Well, I didn't. If you would have prepared I didn't. and had your glasses. <laughs> and I thought about it this morning too. I said, oh, I should get some and I didn't. Disappointing. Next time. Yes, in 40 years. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, coming up in sports, Purdue and UConn meet in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Plus, Frontenac High School Baseball tries to end Riverton's perfect season. John Dales has those highlights and more up next. We're three weeks into the 2024 high school baseball season in Southeast Kansas, and Riverton has yet to lose a game. The Rams bring a 10-0 record into a CNC doubleheader this afternoon as they play host to Frontenac. Riverton Baseball enters the day 10-0. At home taking on Frontenac, game one of the doubleheader. Top of the first inning, Jack Capehart hammers this pitch over the left fielder's head. Two runs come in to score. It's a two RBI double that gives Frontenac the early lead. Same inning. Brock Weemers hits one on the ground sharply towards first. He's going to hustle this one out for an infield RBI single. It's 3-0 Raiders. Abram Frankenberry on the mound gets a couple of strikeouts in the first for the Raiders, then another in the second. Frontenac back at the plate in the second. Cal Turlip laces one to the, to the right side. That brings in another run. Raiders take game one of the doubleheader. Final score, 7-2. And the Raiders also win game two. That one going final at around nine o'clock tonight. This game much closer as well. Riverton had the tying run on third base, the winning run on first when the final out was made in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Raiders next play Gerard. That's another double header a week from today. Over to college baseball, Missouri Southern's Garrett Rice is named the MIAA Hitter of the week for the first time in his career. The Lions senior was seven for 13 against Central Oklahoma over the weekend, hitting a home run and two doubles and helping Southern to a series victory 
over the 19th ranked Broncos. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh State infielder Caden Trochim is named the MIAA Softball Hitter of the Week. She was a big part of PSU's doubleheader sweep over Missouri Southern on Saturday afternoon. She went four for five at the plate with two home runs and seven runs batted in in two games. She helped Pittsburgh State win its sixth in a row and keep its home record perfect. The Gorillas are 20-0 on their home field so far. The 2023-24 college basketball season comes to a close tonight. Purdue and UConn meet in the championship of the NCAA men's tournament. For the last couple of weeks, the Boilermakers and Huskies seem destined to match up in this championship game. And at halftime of the national title game, halftime just wrapping up right now, UConn leads Purdue 36 to 30 after the first 20 minutes of play. Purdue's seven foot four center, Zach Eady, leads all scores with 16. UConn has won 47 games in a row when holding a lead at halftime. If the Huskies make that 48, they'll be back-to-back -back national champs. I'll give you another score update tonight on KOAM News at 10. That's a look at sports. We'll be back after this. A Southeast Kansas dance instructor is approaching 10 years of business after taking her first steps into entrepreneurship as a teenager. KOAM's Friends Wallace takes a look behind the scenes at her studio and the dancer's success. A dance academy in Iola, Kansas is getting on the good foot. Also, it's an emerging staple within the community. Just a block south of the largest town square in the U.S. sits a studio where there's lots of laughs, lots of fun, and as you'll see, lots of love. Miss Chelsea's Dance Academy is a childhood dream fulfilled dreamt of by Chelsea yeah. Lee of Iola, Kansas. <laughs> Chelsea's love of dance was set at a very early age as she's been dancing since the age of three. Naturally, the love grew and spilled into wanting to lend a helping hand, assisting her own instructor in any possible way. About 10 or 11, I really got into the working with the kids part of it. Um, obviously, I couldn't be on the payroll, <laughs> but I willingly volunteered my time and just started helping my dance teacher at the time with her classes, um, taking kids to the bathroom, making sure they knew, blowing their nose, tying their shoes, and she would be like, can you show what, the, what, uh, what this step is? And I'd be like, yes. And I was 12 and just so like enamored with the entire aspect of being a dance teacher. Teacher being the operative word, from that experience alone, she honed in on becoming a dance instructor. Opportunity knocking, she had the chance to start an assisting position, which she modestly accepted. I was like, sign me up. What day do you need me? What time? <laughs> the rest is pretty much history. Before graduating high school, she had an even greater opportunity available. Perching the studio she was assisting in taking on the task with no hesitation, using the money she was originally saving for a car and putting it towards the studio, ensuring her dream. Approaching 10 years of business with accolades to boot, most recently being awarded the Ace of Initiative Award by the Iola Chamber of Commerce, Chelsea's most valued awards are her core values of love and family, which is felt by her dancers. A lot of it is also, everybody loves dance and like there's such a family energy here and Chelsea is a huge part of that obviously, but like, I call all of the little girls my little sisters, and I'm their big sister, so it's one big family. The love and support for the community are big factors in the ongoing success of the studio. The reciprocation of it is evident at Miss Chelsea's Dance Academy, where there's lots of laughs, lots of fun, and... <laughs> Reporting in Iola, Friends Wallace, KOAM News. The Dance Academy's next performance is May 31st and June 1st at the Bolas Fine Arts Center in Iola. Well, last night was a big night for country music artists. Coming up, we take a look at who took home some hardware from the CMT Awards. Country music was center stage Sunday at the 2024 CMT Music Awards with hit tunes, trophies for fan favorite music videos, and tributes. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with a recap. Welcome to the 2024 CMT Awards! 
The 2024 CMT Music Awards, hosted by Kelsey Ballerini, brought a party packed with performances live from Austin, Texas. And it was an especially exciting night for one artist. We're gonna party, Austin, let's go! Jelly Roll took home three fan-voted trophies, including the coveted Video of the Year for Need a Favor. <laughs> he won that top award just before he rocked out to close out the show. Lainey Wilson earned Female Video of the Year for Watermelon Moonshine. Collaborative Video of the Year went to Carly Pierce for We Don't Fight Anymore, featuring Chris Stapleton. Brooks and Dunn, Wilson and Sammy Hagar were part of an all-star tribute to late country legend Toby Keith. I only hope with this to be as big a part of my community and as good of a friend to fellow artists as she was. Trisha Yearwood received the inaugural June Carter Cash Humanitarian Award and later performed a new song. The show was full of hit tunes, and among the other performers were Keith Urban, Parker McCollum featuring Britney Spencer, Old Dominion with Megan Maroney, Bailey Zimmerman, Cody Johnson, Jason Aldean, Sam Hunt, Ballerini Solo, and with Melissa Etheridge for a quick audience sing-along. Collaborations included Little Big Town and Sugarland, and it's a performance fans can see on the road. It was announced just before the show they're heading out on a tour together this fall. Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Well, that's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of polar bear cubs at a Siberian zoo. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.